So hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Jose Fernando Fibur Barbosa. I'm born and raised in Colombia, uh, and now I'm living in Vienna since uh, six years. Um, today, I want to share a little bit of my experience creating a 2D game with reactive fiber, uh, but also like telling you that this is my first tech talk. And like, <laughs> Thank you so much for the invitation uh, for, for the person organizing React Vienna. And uh, I'm really, really happy to, to be able to, to be with you and share a little bit of me. Um, I'm working on Pub Level as um, a mentor and teacher, and also as a full stack web developer since one year and a half now. It's crazy how time goes fast. Mm -hmm. uh, and something about me that, that could be interesting is two years ago. I was working on a production line doing plastic bottles. So I'm really new to code, um, but I'm really enjoying the, the, the experience to be, to be a web developer and also boot camps, boot camps work. And I've leveled this one of the best for sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, that's good. So good, so a little bit of, of uh, what, what, what I did with this to the game, the idea of this game was not creating a, a game that is on the top of the best standards and everything is what's more about an exploration to so try to learn what is the problems that you are going to face if you are decided to create a game on your own. It feels like me like going into the jungle because if I just use one of these frameworks that, that are, are out there and allow me to do things fast and clean, like for example, Phaser or, or maybe, maybe React game or something like that, maybe there are a lot of solutions that are just there and I didn't want that. Because if, if you are going over the jungle in your airplane, I mean, you are not really seeing what is happening inside. So for me, it was more about that, more my, 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 sheet, my, my, my cheater there in the jungle, trying to destroy all these bugs and everything that may happen. And what's my route? So that means is, is maybe not, the solutions that I did in the game were not, maybe not, not the best, but are my solutions and the way I solve problems. So what a lot of learning, a lot of learning with, with this process. So if you want to check the game, it's, a, it's a still a, a work in progress, but there is already a, a demo. So you can go here to this, uh, my, my GitHub repo and kill the dragon. And then you can open this already deployed, kill the dragon. I'm going to show up a little bit of the game. It's really, really small demo, but um, yeah, it was, have been my, my free time for the last eight months already. <laughs> so it's the stack a little bit is, is Next.js and it's React Tree Fiber. Uh, it's, most, it's, it's just that, right? So it's just a, an, an RPG game um, that, that you, can, you can move around. There is already like the colliders, the, the collisions were a big, big trouble. <laughs> um, and being able to switch in between different uh, scenes was also, a little bit tricky, but now it's just working there. Uh, you can just check your party. Uh, you can also just uh, fight, right? So there are there are some some combat there happening. My idea in the future is making this uh, not with HTML, but making it with reactive fiber. It's going to be a little bit uh, 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 tricky, but I'm pretty sure I'm able to to do it with the knowledge that I have that I have now. The, the hardest part here is killing the mage initiate. If you kill it, then I think you can you can fight against the wolves. So that's the strategy. So just <laughs> just go go there and, and try it if, if you really if you really if you really want. If I don't do anything, they are going to kill me, I guess, but it's okay. So that's that's just the game. <laughs> and I can flee also. So let's let's wait until until the 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 character the character flee and then we can just check a little bit again. Uh, this part is HTML handled by Dry. Dry is a library for reactive fiber that I really recommend that allows you to put HTML objects. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> HTML objects over, over the, over the canvas. So let's, let's work, let's, let's talk a little bit more on that. So, so I use reactive fiber and that's the, the main goal of the talk, trying to have a, fundamental understanding of reactive fiber and do a small introduction on reactive fiber. Uh, it's just a renderer for, for React. 
that is rendered for 3JS. 3JS is a, um, a graphical engine that is very powerful for JavaScript. And in this case, allow us to use this nice syntax that we are all or we love from React. So allow us to, to create these objects a little bit more declarative. So, so we can just type their can, but we can type mesh. We can type a cube geometry instead of just doing the, the 3JS way that we're more uh, plain JavaScript syntax. So uh, there is, here is a small demo on a code sandbox. Uh, so this is from the, this is from React Fiber documentation. But it's, it's really interesting because it allows me to show you the basic parts uh, or, or the, the basic parts of, of the framework. So as you can see, it's just React happening there. The most important part is this canvas element. This canvas element is where all your scene, your 3D scene is going to live. It's, it's, it's kind of, because it's a render, it's kind of similar as React Native since that you have these different elements with the different syntaxes. Kind of similar to that. So you have a special specific elements that, that are working for reactive fiber. So everything is happening inside of the canvas. So actually it came with some tools and hooks that we are going to see um, in, in, in some minutes. And these hooks can only live inside of this canvas. So here uh, you have some elements that are coming from, from the renderer itself. There are these lights that allows you to, to, to give different perspectives of the 3D scene. And you have, this is the, the most beautiful part of Reactive Fiber, allows you to create these components that are, they are actually looking exactly like, like components that actually have a state. You can see here we have a user state and we can do nice things as clicking and update a state and hover and do, do all these nice things over a canvas. Right, and this is not this is something that we are not used to to have that easy. Like you just look with this amount of code, you can just create really really beautiful things in no time, uh, and, and this is just happening on the graphic card of our computer with WebGL5. So it's pretty good. So this uh, inside of, of this canvas, we can have uh, some of these elements that are specific for the scene, as cameras, ambient lights, or we can have these these objects that are, are our mesh. So a mesh is just a collection of elements specific for reactive fiber that represent a 3D object, right? In this case, we have this mesh that is having a box geometry and it's having a standard material. And this material is the thing that is going to give some properties to the object, in this case, just giving the color. So these are the, the basic, parts of reactive fiber like like the canvas that uh, that you can also configure here to have different kind of cameras like orthographic camera or perspective camera uh, here is, is, is showing you how to configure it so you can inside of the canvas if you can pass some props and these props are going to configure somehow how, how it's working and all this is have a representation on 3js so if you have experience with 3js Everything that you can do in 3JS, you can do it with Reactive Fiber. It's, it's just exact, exact, exact the same, just the syntax is different and it's a, a syntax more appealing to us. Here are the, mesh, the, mesh, the meshes um, and that's it. So Reactive Fiber support all the geometries that we have in 3JS. And we don't, and we don't only have to stick to this. You can also, if you are using so far as Blender to create your, your 3D objects, you can also import it on Reactive Fiber. But it's pretty, pretty useful that, that we have uh, the full support for it. So if you go to the geometries of 3JS, this is the documentation of 3JS, um, you, you have it like that, like this. This is 3JS uh, and it's, it's looking more, more JavaScript, plain JavaScript. As you can see, you need to create this new the, you need to call the, the class and, and all these kind of things. But in Reactive Fiber, you just call, you just create this, this JSX syntax with box geometry. So you don't need to do a const geometry new tree box, but you just box geometry as you saw in the, in the, in the sandbox, right? So it's just, the relation is just there. So you understand. In my case, because I was using, um, I was using, I was trying to create a 2D game 
I, I, I didn't use a lot of these geometries. The only geometry that I needed was the, the plane geometry. So it just, uh, uh, if, if you put an orthographic camera and then, and then you put some uh, small, is, this is not even a cube. This is, this is called a plane geometry. Uh, you can just put one plane geometry next to the other and you can color it or you can put a texture on it and just create this, this nice looking video games, like old school video games. So this is the way who is working. They are just a lot of different plane geometries and I put texture over them. It's the same for the, for the character. The character is just a plane geometry that I put a texture on it. So, okay, so reactive fiber, it came with uh, some specific hooks that allow us to, to have some functionality. It's very important that these hooks, as I told you, they are inside of the, of the canvas. If you put, if you try to use these hooks outside of the canvas, it's going to give you a weird error as context lost or something like that. So the most important hooks or the hooks that I more, more used for this video game was use frame and use loader. Use loader allows you to load any 3JS loader. And if you are using a tool library as drive, you can use, use texture to load texture yourself. Um, and that's that's the syntax how you can use it. So for example, use frame, you just, just put it inside of the box and use frame is going to allow you to call the, the, game, the, the game clock. So it's something that when you are not working with reactive fiber, we use with create animation frame. We don't need to use react animation, uh, create animation frame anymore because we have, we have this use frame hook now here in reactive fiber. Um, yeah, that's, that's the thing that I just tell you, like we shouldn't, we shouldn't use it outside of the canvas. And uh, this, this library, if you are going to use reactive fiber in the future, I really recommend you to use drive because it has some nice functions. Like in this case, instead of calling the text loader again and again and again, you can just pass uh, an array of, of textures and it's going to load all the textures at the same time. So this library is, is pretty good. Um, yeah, that's, that's the thing that is replacing every, okay. About use frame, that's also, that is very important and it's very cool. Is this use frame receive the scene, the scene, the completely scene here. So you can access the clock and the camera. And this is going to trigger, this is this callback that you put inside of use frame is going to, to trigger this function in every frame. So 60 times per second, if you want. So the idea here is you can just get the reference of your mesh, for example, and then you can update the position in every render. And what this is going to cause is like in every render, your, your, your square or your mesh or your box is going to move a little bit on the X axis. I think you can see it here, what is going to happen when you do that. So in the, in the frame, in the use frame, you can just uh, modify the, the, the position of the object as it would be an object in a 3D space. It's no problem with that. And yeah, now for, for I, there is a lot of things in Reactive Fiber that I would love to show, but I guess is the most important is just go and explore to it. It's a very powerful tool, a very, very powerful tool. So I think I, I talked about, okay, what I can show in these 30 minutes some 20 minutes that the people could just enjoy and explore. And this is for me was a sprite animations. So I don't know if you have experience with sprite animations, but they are, they are pretty cool things that, that you do updating the position of the texture really fast. Uh, in Reactive Fiber, we do that accessing the offset of the animation. Uh, so I'm going to, I'm going to show you how, how, I, how you do it in, in a second. But the idea here is you update this texture.repeat and texture.offset, and you can do something similar to that. So what is in reality happening is you have a texture that is just moving and you are seeing the animation here. So just to, to for, for, for finalize this, this small demo about reactive fiber or this small introduction, I want to, to show you how I did that in a second. Let me check my dashboard. Oh no, that's not good. So I need to log in. Okay, give me a second. 
Oh no, the link is the link is different. Okay, let's go here. Okay, let's. I think it's okay. I think I can use this one. Uh, public. Okay. Let's see with Hiva. Sorry, I I just had the wrong link here. <laughs> it should be it should be here. So I just created React to Fiber demo React Dina. That's it. That's what I need. All good. Now now it's all good. So this is a very small code alone. The idea here is like I showed you. You can just put this mesh here inside, and then you have this plane buffer geometry. Uh, this number that you are seeing here, one and one, means this tile is one unit width and wind unit high. If I just switch this for six, for example, you're going to see that it's a very, very long plane geometry. So I can just update this based with these arcs. Uh, I can, to this material, just change the color. Like if I just use yellow here, I can just do any, any, anything like that. But most important here is I can use this use loader that I was showing you before to load a texture. And this texture here uh, is going to be this is cool monkey texture, right? So what I, over, <laughs> over this square, over this small plane geometry, I'm going to load this full image. So I just use the loader, the hook that I'm having here. And then I put here inside of this map property. And oh, it's, it's there, right? But it's really weird looking, we don't want that. But the reason why is this happening is because React Fiber is trying to put the full, the full image in the tile, in the full tile, right? And that's called the repeat of the, of the, of the texture. So if in this case, we are telling like we want the full image to be one time in the geometry. If we make the, if we make the geometry longer, like we already know, like for example, this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We are, it's nine long. We, we want each of these small sections being in a, in a single unit. We can just say that is, is okay, not this one, but this one, nine. And now it's going to be, okay, now it's good in this, but we need also the, the, the height. Let's do four here. Okay, now we have our, our, our geometry a little bit longer, right? So, but this is also not what we want, right? <laughs> we want to have this single element inside of the square, but it's very important that, that, you, that you go with me here because I want you to understand what this repeat is because it was very confusing for me at the beginning when I was working <laughs> with reactive fiber. And what it's saying is the image right now is one time in the in the in the in the in the whole geometry. If I change this, for example, to two, it's going to be two times there. You see, it's trying to put two times. So the same space, but now two times. If I just move to three, the same space three times. But also, I can say the same space, but only half of the time. And now, I'm just doing a little bit what I want. Or I can say one ninth of the time. Now, it's just putting one ninth of this big image in the whole plane geometry. But still, the geometry is too big. So I, now I can go back and make the geometry again small. Now we have it a little bit better. We need just to do the same with the Y axis. And this was very, 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 very confusing for me at the beginning. <laughs> but now we have it, right? So now we have the thing. So if you see the texture here and what we have here, you can actually see that is this guy. So what we need is a way to move from this to this to this to this to this, or from this to this to this to this. And this is what we call the offset. And this is just what we have the texture offset here. So, and it's the same. If I just want to be one ninth, 
right? So this is from zero, now it's from one ninth. So now we are here. So it is going to be two ninth, three ninth, four ninth. And this is what is happening. If I just go here and I start to move two and three and four and five. Yeah. So now it's beginning to be this animation. And if you put this into the use frame loop that I showed, that, that I showed you, that is going to do repetitive tasks. You can do this every three seconds or, or every second, and this, the animation is going to happen. Um, and that's it. That's the way how you how you animate things on Reactive Fiber. Uh, yeah, I guess I guess that's that's clear. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, I can try to, to, if you have questions in the future, you can also just ask me, but, but it's, it's a little bit complicated. You, you, can, you, can, you can just use the, let me give me a second. So here, uh, you, you, you can use here, what is the, wait a minute. You can just use, use frame here, but it's, it's this is, this is one of the problems that I just faced and I'm going to just show you in a second really fast here. So you can use your stream that is this hook that is going to call this a lot of the time. And I can just tell that the texture offset and this is going to happen in every render, the texture offset dot X is going to be plus one ninth all the time. <laughs> it's really fast, right? So what is happening here, because this is this is just being used every frame, is updating, uh, updating the offset very, 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 very fast. So if you want to, for example, happen in this every second, then you would need to have a, a, a kind of a reference here with that is counting. So every three renders or every four, every four frames or every 10 frames, just do this switch a little bit. Uh, and you can also just, uh, for example, have, you can check if, if you press a key. If I press the key up, then do this. If the, if, the, if the key is not up, then don't do this. And that's the way. That's how I, yes, can please. I just, like really all react here? Like can I use just new states or? Sure, sure. I, 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 think, I think in the other, in the other, here you have, you have a state, right? And here is happening the same. So what we are doing is on every frame, you are updating the rotation a little bit. So like just like say, um, have a state of like counts of every frame of rendering. Okay, and that that's that's the interesting. So that's very important that you don't update the state on on use ref on use frame. Sorry, why? Because this is happening. Where is where is the code sandbox? It's just here. This is happening. 60 times per second. Mm -hmm. So if you try to update the state 60 times per second, it's going to be an issue for, 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 for React. So what you usually do in when you are doing things that need to be updated on, on a use frame, you just use ref, right? So you just check with the reference that as you know, use ref allow us to have something that is remaining to re-renders, but without re-render the, the the component itself so if you want to store some variables you don't do it on a state if you want to store some variables that have influence in the use frame you just use ref for that mm -hmm. good so now you know what is this <laughs> uh reactive fiber is an excellent tool okay so what we learned so to have a conclusion here it's an excellent tool for uh, not only for 3d but also for 2d it's very nice uh, we learn about fundamental concepts of reactive fiber as canvas, mesh, geometries, and textures. And um, yeah, we also learn about the hooks, use frame and use loader, and sprite animation 101. That's it. Hey, thank you very much. Um, so I'm super bad at, at browser frame ready stuff, but does <laughs> Does the amount of frames depend on what the browser or device you have? Like, because you know how you know how computers and phones are now coming out with like super high high frame rates. Mm -hmm. Does that affect? 
the nice thing about that, and it's good that you asked because it was my, my question. So, because if, if, if I understand well, what you are saying is, of, of course, based on your computer, your animation is going to be faster or slower. Right. Right? <laughs> yeah, of course. If you just do like I did, it's going to happen like that. If, if, you, if you just uh, use the update on, on, every, on, every, on every frame rate, if you have a computer that, that update frame slower, then the animation is going to be slower and so on. So the game will run slower. Exactly. Yeah. So what you do here is you have here something that is called the clock. And you can have here also the delta here. So if you console.log here the delta, you are going to see that it's telling you how long happened in between the last frame and this one. So if, if for example, uh, you, you, you are in a, in a device that is faster, this number is going to be slower. Gotcha. And it's, it's slower, then the number is going to be bigger. So you can use this number as your reference instead of the, of the frame rate. So what I did in my game in order to don't have this problem is I have a, a, a reference and use ref that is adding this value. And when it reached, for example, 100, then I know uh, 1,000, I know it's one second, right? Because it's milliseconds. Mm -hmm. And there you can determine manually what frame rate you would want to have. Exactly. Cool. That's it. So, so here you receive, and I think it's one, 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 one of the slides. You can also, this clock, you can also work with this clock and then you can do this clock reset and stop and pause. Uh, this clock have some, they have some 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 features, but yeah, the problem is is the time is also not longer, and I would I would love to to show you a lot of things, but yeah, of course. So if you go here, uh, React Three Fiber, I use Frame. Things here. React with fiber docs, I think it's docs. Yeah, here they are they are showing you. Wait a minute, this frame. Basic animations use frame. Here they told you like this clock get elapsed time, for example. And this is this is something that you, you have access with the um, with, with three with three JS, so three JS docs clock. And this is the clock. You, ha you have access to all these methods. So clock.auto star, clock dot start time, clock dot old time, elapsed time, running start stop so you can control the clock of the of the of the render with all these methods too so you can just go with that very cool right yeah, <laughs> very cool yes first of all this will have probably be my first question how to decouple <laughs> from the frame rate uh and for the good tip with the ref since my question is what did you use to manage your state because i think there are a lot of components going on in a bigger game and they have to interact with each other to kind of make some global state Yeah, <laughs> that's been a, a big struggle, of course. <laughs> uh, but what I have is in the main component, I have instead of using user state now, I'm using use ref, basically. So what I'm doing is in the use frame, I'm checking the reference most of the time. So for the colliders, for example, I check the position of the character all the time. If and I, ha and I have uh, one state with all the arrays of colliders. So if it's checking every frame, if the if the character is touching one of these ones, then don't move. So and so on. But uh, in inside of a component, a very specific component that is nested and don't have reference. So we you, we you don't need to 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 re-render a lot of stuff. How to explain that a little bit better? So the problem with using a state is every time you re-render, in this case specifically, let me show the game, is going, to, just think about all of these small small spaces are just geometries. If you just use a, a state, set state, 
the, the computer is going to need to calculate all of them and you don't want that, right? So this is, this is just the, the canvas. But because we are using components and nested components inside, so if you are using this component and this component is really deep on the tree, you can use a state here because this is going to only re-render this one. Yeah, but this component now may be good about to be the whole project on the left, which is somewhere else in the component. Yeah, exactly. But in, when you need to use a global, a global state, you use use ref. When you need uh, something that is a little bit more more specific to this, you can use state. It's a little bit tricky, and I haven't I haven't found clean solutions to it. Most of the time, the code looks clunky. But but it's the way I found because I, I, I'm not sure. Maybe 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 if you find a framework for gaming in Reactive Fiber, and this may be a question that is open to me. Like maybe just think about these problems and maybe create some kind of library for that. It could be interesting in the future. Uh, but you can check, of course, the code uh, and see how I solved it. Solve this, some of these problems for sure. Thank you so much.